I'm Susan and today I wanted to show you what you really need if you want to learn to play with clay. How much do you need to invest? I say about $20. You just need a roller. This is one I've gotten from eBay that's about $2 with the design at it. It's a smaller roller. This is the larger roller that I think Sculpey or one of those companies has. They work the same. You could use a piece of PVC pipe. I've used all sorts of things. It works the same. They have long blades, short blades, eBay has the cheapest price. Personally, the short blade's my favorite, but I use the long blade all the time because that was the first ones that were available. And you need an acrylic block. It doesn't have to be a fancy one. As you can see, mine is really banged up. Doesn't matter. It's just for rolling out beads, putting things on. It's just a great little tool. That's what you really need. I bought this beginner package of clay from, I think, Joann's or Michael's. It was $30. I had a 50% off coupon, so it came to $15. So basically, those three tools that you need, I will put the links below for on um, eBay, how much they cost, but it was approximately $5 for those three tools. If you want to get started and just see what this does, that's the way to go. You also, to make beads, will need a marks it tool. I have another tutorial I will link below that shows you how to make a marks it tool. It's pretty simple. The other tool you'll need is a used gift card and you can wrap it in any kind of paper, notebook paper, scrapbook paper, whatever. It just, the paper just keeps it from sticking to the clay. Uh, another thing you need is a cutter. This cutter I have made from a very, very fancy thing. I have made it from a Pepsi can. Yes, you heard it right. All I did was cut a strip off straight, wrap it around, and tape it on both sides. That's all you need to do. So all these fancy tools, you really don't need them. This will give you the same amount of clay every time. I didn't really do this neatly. I was just doing it quick but this one I did do neatly. It will give you the same amount of clay every time when you cut, and that's all the purpose is. The other thing you can use is the bottom of a soda can. I saw this from Ludmilla, I can't remember her last name, and all she did was cut around it and bend this in so that it's not sharp. And if you wanted to bake a rounded bead, you could just use this and bake right in the oven with this. So there's lots of tools that you can get for free. The other thing is you'll need a needle tool. I use this for lots of things. I have another tutorial that shows how to make this. You can even use a toothpick if you want to make it. So just look around the house. I'm sure you'll find things that you never thought to use for polymer clay. But if, to ready, really see what you can do with this, I am going to literally pull this apart and I'm just going to do a couple segments of showing you how I make beads with this little amount of clay. Now I normally would love to add to this and buy an extra package of pearl, um, translucent, and white, but I'm not going to because I am going to show you what you get literally out of this package. And I'm going to use the entire package and make beads with it. So let's get started. Let me open these up and come back. So I have all my clay unwrapped and they actually give you a really nice collection of colors, but I am going to break this up just because I need to start making some beads and I want to show you what you can do with this. So I don't have, I'm not going to use my pasta machine because that's where you're going to begin if you're a beginner. Um, let me go with this lighter green. I'm going to take these two greens and I am going to make a leaf cane. Well. Because I don't have a pasta machine, I have to condition the clay. And you're gonna say, why are you doing it that way? I find it easier to roll out the clay. Let me take my ring off. It just seems to beat it up better. I find that you can roll it out with a roller, but it's been sleeping a while in the package. And when the clay has been sleeping, it's really not cooperative. Now, I do live in Florida, so it's about 95 degrees here, like it or not and the clay actually likes the warmer weather so it's easier to condition. So if you're up north and it's cold, put it in your back pocket, a couple packages. If I find that body temperature heats it up, um, put it you know, in a warmer place. Don't, just don't leave it where it's freezing or in a colder spot of the house. 
don't put it on the radiator, but put it close to where you get heat. And you can see this clay is kind of um, falling apart and squishy. What you are going to need to do is keep rolling this out until it goes together and stays together. I really want you to see this because most people are going to open this up and say, I hate this crap. This is horrible. I've watched Susan do it and it comes out perfect and mine isn't coming out perfect. Right, I have conditioned the clay. Now I do use a pasta machine to condition the clay. And when I started out, I never heard of a pasta machine to condition clay. In fact, I didn't even know you had to condition it, but I just played with it and learned that the more I played with it and the more I moved it around, the softer and more pliable the clay became and it changes its whole complexity. So this is the time that if you wanted to add some other color to the clay, like let's add, this is kind of an ugly um, iridescent. Let's add that to this so that we get a little iridescent in this. It'll change the look of our um, cane. And this is probably the best time to add it. And I love mixing colors. To me, mixing colors is what makes my beads look so much like they're painted versus just layers of clay. But you can see it is still not coming together. Normally, I would turn the camera off. But as I condition this clay, I am leaving it on because I really want you to see what this entails because most people get frustrated and say it's not working for them. Well, these packages have been sitting in the store, probably in a warehouse, for at least a year or six months. And this clay can sit for 20 years and still be fine. I have canes that are 20 years old and still, once I start reducing them, they're fine. So it, it doesn't go bad. It just, see how it gets funny? And you have to wake it up. Now you can twist it. You can squish it. You can do whatever you can. In fact, if you have arthritis, this is a great workout. But you want to get this clay to the point where it's not doing that when I roll it. It will start to come together. And so I am going to continue doing this until the clay comes together and I will do it with this one. And I think I'm going to add some of this yellowy white to this one just so you see what I'm doing for my colors. Because I really want to show you a whole tray of beads that I make with all this clay. So you can see what you can get for $20 worth of clay in a lot of time. <laughs> so I will condition this and I'm gonna time this out and see how long it takes me. Because this has already been four minutes of conditioning. So we'll see how long it takes for me to condition one piece of clay to give you an idea of how much that is without a pasta machine. So I've got both of them conditioned. It actually took me about six minutes of working straight, just rolling and rolling and squishing and rolling to get both of these conditioned. So it took me 12 minutes altogether. Now, because I don't have a pasta machine that I'm using, I am just doing this all by hand, just to give you an idea that you can do this. I have made it into a teardrop shape. So I've basically made a ball pinched it and flattened it. And this will give you the same Skinner blend as if you cut it into a cut it into a rectangle and made triangles. So if you don't have a full package of clay cuz this is only about a half ounce of clay. These are only 1 ounce packages and I cut it in half and then I used a little wedge off of another color so that's probably like an eighth of a package and added it to it. So these are definitely not two ounce packages. This is probably two ounces together, maybe a little more. But you don't have to have a square to start out doing a Skinner blend. Polymer Clay Tutor has a um, tutorial on how to do a Skinner blend just using teardrops and it works great. And now you're gonna see the pitfalls of working with a roller. It's not impossible, it's difficult. Now you can buy pasta machines on AliExpress and Wish that are about $20 with the shipping. I've seen them, I don't know how good they are, but how bad could they be? The only thing I've found about the cheaper pasta machines is they don't last me 10 years. But 
if you're just curious and you want to play and you've got an extra 20 bucks to waste they're well worth it I think they're a good investment but I'm just showing you what you can do with the minimal investment twenty dollars which really gives you an idea now you will have to bake this in your oven and I know the older polymer clay did let off fumes so I am extremely paranoid and I do what we call tent it which means I just cover it with foil just a big foil tent or a dollar store roasting pan I put on top so that my oven doesn't get filled with fumes now I've heard you don't need to do it but because I'm old school that's what I do so I would recommend you do it if you don't do it you won't die it's just I'm paranoid so I am going to continue rolling this out until I get a Skinner blend and I will come back because this is boring to watch so it took me about 17 times folding it over and rolling it before I got this and now I'm just squishing it up into a log I'm going to roll it the other way and I am going to make a cane with it and this is kind of boring to watch so I'm going to create a leaf cane out of this you can watch my leaf cane video and I am going to create lots of other canes with all these other clays that I have so I'm gonna go create these come back and show you what I get out of some of this because it is kind of boring to watch what I'm going to do but I really want to show you what you can get out of this pound and a half of just little assorted pieces because I think there's quite a bit here and we'll, we've got a stone clay which means it's got like little flecks of glitters I don't know if they're really glitters or kind of um, embossing powder in it so it kind of has a stone effect this would be really pretty mixed with the pearl and put maybe some leaves on the ends. I'm gonna get our homemade clay uh, bead roller and we'll roll out some beads with these. Maybe add a little bit of black to it. And let's see what we get just out of this mix of clay. So you can see, is this your thing or do you not really wanna invest in it? Just watch other people do it. Cause that can be fun too. So let me make this cane and let me make a flower cane and come back. So just to show you how I roll out a cane, since I don't have a pop, since I'm not using, I can't say I don't have, since I'm not using a pasta machine, I'm losing my shape here. So I just keep pushing it in and rolling it thinner. And I can flip this over and do it the same on this side because I want this as thin as I can get it before I roll it up. And now I'm just going to take it and roll it onto itself so if you don't have a pasta machine it does not mean you can't do this it just means you're gonna get a little workout so I'm just basically making that plug and now I'm going to use my table remember I have a glass table if you don't have a glass table if you have a tile if you have a picture frame you can use that anything will work and now I'm going to just tighten this up a little bit and then I'm going to roll out my veins and add my veins and put a um, wrap around the ends and I will have my leaf cane so then I will move on from there so here I ran across a little problem which I'm not used to having because I'm used to having more clay than I need to work with I've rolled this out by hand so I can't get this exact same thickness again and I don't have enough here so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to roll this clay onto this other piece of clay and it's going to make little marks like registration marks of where I should cut and that is going to make it easier for me to fit this little piece in here and this is really kind of the little techniques you have to fiddle with when you're working with a piece of clay that because when you have a pasta machine you know if I roll it out again on a number one I'm gonna get that exact same thickness on that number one or three or whatever number you're using but when you're rolling it out by hand you don't and you're sort of guessing the thickness and so you can see I've got my leaf cane started here and I'm just clean, finishing it up but it sorry about my iPad it is a little more challenging creating canes when you don't have as much clay so most of my clay that I'm going to make my canes out of 
other than this one, and I don't know if I'm going to do a fantasy leaf cane because I don't have consistency with my rolling. Now, if I can find a deck of playing cards or two rulers, something that will give me on each side, I can put something that will be the same thickness. You know what? Maybe I'm just going to take some cardboard and make some stacks. That'll give me the same thickness that I can make stripes that are even. So let's see if I can do that. Um, I'm just trying to think of ways to work with what you have, but there's really not much clay here. There's only an ounce of each. So to do a cane where we have a stripe all the way, a checker all the way around, I don't think there would be enough clay here. But we still could do a stripe cane and do something with that. So let me move on and see what we get. So you can do a stripe without a pasta machine. This is the one that I rolled out on the pasta machine, which is equal to four stacks of cereal cardboard. And what I did was I took piece of cardboard and I stacked it four times on itself, just a cereal box. And I have made two of these. So what you can do is, I had rolled out that already before, you can just roll it out using this as the thickness. So this won't allow the rollers to go any thinner. So you can get the same thickness every time. And we are going to be able to make some stripes. Now I don't know what I'm going to do with my stripe cane, but I just want to show you that just because you don't have a pasta machine doesn't mean you can't do it. So as I'm working with this clay, um, I'm not using all these colors at once. So I'm conditioning it and I need to store it because not too many of you are going to sit in one time and use all your clay. I put it in these little cellophane packages. And you say, what the heck packages? These are Clearview pages that you can get at the dollar store, the office supply store. You can steal them from your kids. They simply, I just cut them across and across this way and then I cut the seam. So I just have it open like a book. This is, I don't know what the PVC or the um, plastic this is made of, but it doesn't seem to eat with the clay or bond with the clay. So it's a perfect way to store it. I usually put them in a shoe box and I store them from color to color. It's also great if you've made a Skinner blend, you have a little bit left. You can store it right on one of these sheets and use it to say create a little rose or something that you have. These are just little ends of clay that I used up. So there's just different ways you can store it but I find this one to be the easiest. Whatever you do, do not put it in a Tupperware container. A lot of plastics and polymer clay do not get along and the clay will start to eat away at the plastic and it will be contaminated and you can't use it. So just a little tip and I am going to continue conditioning clay. So as I'm mixing my clay, I'm noticing that these colors that came with the package are very close to my skin tone color, which would make really ugly beads. And I like contrast, so I'm going to add this red and make a pretty pink out of it. This really odd pearlescent-y kind of greenish strange color as you can see with skin tone doesn't do anything. So we're going to make a nice teal out of it. We're going to add some blue to it. And once again we've got a funky beige. We're just going to add some purple. This stone color doesn't really work for me. So we're going to do what every sparkly girl does. I'm going to add some holographic glitter. This is ultra fine scrapbooking glitter. You can get this at Michael's, Joann's, any scrapbook company, lots of craft stores. And I'm going to add it also to my translucent because it could use a little sparkle too. So when you see me working with these clays or see my clays later on and you say, I didn't get those with my set, that's because I altered them. So now you know. Okay, so here's the outcome of adding the red to the clay, the green to the clay. The purple didn't come out too nice. i um, not too thrilled with that, but I'm hoping they didn't give me too much purple. These three purples, so I'm hoping maybe we could stack this and use this as the middle of the flower. We're going to do the brush, stro the pencil stroke flower, and I think that this may work pretty well with it. Even though it's kind of ugly, sometimes the contrast will be good. And you can see the stone color clay, which was really ugly, looks a whole lot better with some sparkle in it. And then this is my translucent, just 
packing it up with glitter and you can see I've still got some glitter on my hands but this will give us so much prettier beads than just those plain clays so when you see me working with this and you say oh my gosh I didn't get those in my package just mix them up so now that I've got my clay all conditioned and my glitter is mixed in and some of my colors mixed now it's time to play so we're just gonna take these I am going to make some bullseye canes and some pencil stroke flower canes and see what we get and whatever I've left over we're gonna make some stripes and stacks and then I'm gonna use the rest as filler clay so I think we've got quite a bit here and I should probably have a huge amount of beads when we're done so I'm excited to see what this turns out to be so I'm back and I made a few canes um, this is the pencil stroke flower and normally I would use a large ball tool to kind of make the indent in this flower, but you're new at clay, you don't have this, so we gotta look for alternatives. I have this pen that has a rounded top, I think this'll work. The other thing I can do is just use my fingers. If you don't have anything else, you gotta work with what you've got. So I made my needle tool and I am just going to bend in the flowers on the edges. And because I don't have the ball tool, you can either use your knuckle and push it in, or I'm going to just use this pen, because this pen has this perfect little cup thing in it. And so I'm just going to use that. But look around the house. I am sure you will find you have things all over. Now when you're cleaning out the odd draws, you will look at things differently that you can use for clay if you're into clay. And if you're not into clay, you can always give this away as a gift to somebody and they will have a lot of fun with it. So you can see how I made that flower. These other flowers um, I've done a little thicker so I'm going to do them just as a regular flat flower and these I'm going to continue as a marguerite. So I just wanted to come and show you what you can use that you have around the house when you're stuck. Okay so I'm back with another issue. I want to make these into marguerite beads and I don't have the rubber tool that I normally use because I'll, I'm new at this. So I'm going to take a pencil that's not very sharp so it won't really push in and I am just going to push down on the petals and I am amazed that this worked. Now the other thing you can do is if the pencil lead transfers to the clay you could just put a little clear nail polish on the end of the pencil because that'll sharpen off anyway. But that seems to be pretty good. It really seemed to do the trick as to adding the little petals and I am using my needle tool just to put the hole through. Now it's fine with the um, thicker pin but to make holes in these this is a regular like sewing pin that I've put a handle on because it would have been really hard to try to skewer it through and I'm just using this to skewer my beads because once again, I don't have fancy tools, and that's what this video is about, is working with what you have. And so if you don't have fancy tools, you can use what you have. You just kind of have to, I know it sounds silly to add a handle to it, but it's really hard to hold that little pin. When, when you're holding it, you're almost at the edge here. And so you'll, you don't have enough leverage to make it actually through the bead. It's pretty darn close. So when you add the handle to it, it gives you that extra leverage to make it through. So when you're holding it, you just want to make sure that you kind of drill it through because this is a bigger hole than I normally would put. And if, you don't, if you're not careful in drilling it, you will distort the bead. So I'm going to use my cutter. It's not the best cutter in the world, but it does the job. I have rolled this out between my two strips of cardboard that are four thicknesses, which is basically some um, cereal cardboard. And I'm just going to cut out these circles. Now I am using the full size circle to make a pod. These are the pods I've made. And I am using half of the circle to make these beads. So it's just a way to really measure my clay. And it doesn't matter if they're perfect or they're not perfect, but if you really want to see if this is your thing, this is probably the best investment you should make. And if you like this, then you invest in a set of cutters. You can get them on AliExpress, Wish, eBay. All those different sites have them. Now, to make the pod, you've, you can see the video. I, you know, make this little circle and then I pinch it and then I cover it with clay. And to make my beads, I'm just going to cut this in half 
and cover it with the basket weave cane I made that's under here and that's how I've got these beads. So just some little tips that you don't need to have fancy tools to make nice beads. So I'm in the process of making a donut and I don't have deli paper so what can you use? I'm going to use my clay box and I'm going to just use a piece of scrap paper that I misprinted on. And see it doesn't stick any different than the deli paper. The deli paper is thinner and it just has more um, body to it that it wouldn't tear after a while but it doesn't mean you have to have it. Now I don't have a knitting needle to blend in this little crack that I have where it's split so I'm just using a pen. Just, this is a pen that has a real smooth body to it and that will do the same thing. So then we have the other problem. How are we going to put the center in the donut because I don't have the really nice set of cutters. Here I found a bottle cap this will do the perfect circle and if it doesn't cut all the way through it's no big deal I can just make the lines in it and use an exacto knife and cut it through so it there's just a lot of ways that you can finish these beads off with things you have around the house so if you don't have all the tools don't feel like it's a major investment or you can't do good clay so now you can see I am just cutting this middle out and no big deal if I don't get it on one side I can get it on the other and now I'm going to refine it with my pen just the body of the pen is all I need it's a lot thicker than I thought it was there we go and see I don't have a perfect cut don't worry about it you can either take the, the bottle cap and push it through or you can take the pen and just roll this in and refine it. And I'll finish refining this and I've made some leaf canes and some flower canes and I'll decorate this up and you'll see it done in the end. But I just wanted to give you that tip, you don't have to have all the perfect tools. So I've covered a ball of clay, just a scrap ball of clay with this cane that I made and I wanted to show you a little tidbit of what I am going to do with this which is just the bottom of a soda can and I've just basically used the excess and folded it down so it's not sharp on the edges well if you wanted to bake this circle so that it had a dome shape to it so it looked more dimensional without adding any more weight this is the way to do it you could also bake it on an old light bulb but how many of us have old light bulbs around we all have more soda cans so I'm just basically giving it that dome shape and you can buy these domes from Sculpey I actually have them but you can only bake one at a time in the oven where with this you could take 10 soda cans if you wanted to do 10 beads at a time and let's face it we're saving this from a landfill anyway so I'm just pressing it around and shaping it and now I will decorate it so you'll see it in my final beads. I will put a hole in the top here and whether I decide to drill some holes in the bottom for fringe or not depends on how I'm going to bead it. But it shows you how I make a nice easy dome bead and how once again you find more stuff in the trash that are tools than why buy them because that's more money we have for clay. So I'll show you this at the end. So I've, I finished decorating it and I want to press these little pieces of cane in. And once again, I don't have any um, deli paper, so you can just use regular paper. You just can't see as clearly what you're doing. But I want to make sure that these are pretty much embossed in so that they're not going to come off. Now, to get this bead off after this bakes, I'm just going to pop it. Basically nothing adheres to something that's shiny when, with polymer clay. If it's a slick surface it will not adhere. So once it's baked it will just pop right off and this way it'll be finished on both sides. Now you can take a needle tool and put a hole in it right wherever you want right now. I'm going to leave it without a hole because I haven't decided whether I want to use this as a cabochon or as a bead and I can always drill it with a regular hand drill after it's baked so just a little Hint. So another quick tool hack I found is to make these marguerite beads I usually use a little ball tool to make that 
cup in the bead, I have found a pencil eraser. A used one's a little better, but you can always just take the edges off of it with a piece of paper, just using it. And I just find that it makes that perfect little cup, so another tool. Now, I also have a lot of beads that I wanted to show you I am going to bake. I have them on a tile. This is just a household tile, you know, one you'd put on the floor or the wall. I've had this probably over 20 years, so it fits in my toaster oven perfectly. This is an old t-shirt that I've cut up, and I bake my beads on a t-shirt. It will leave no shiny spots. This bead, when I pull it off, may have a shiny spot because I baked it on a shiny surface. So that's the reason I do that. But just a quick preview before we come back. So I have this all baked and I just wanted to show you how easy it just pops right off. See, it just kind of releases. And that's the shiny mark that you get when you have something baked on something slick, um, a non-porous surface. And so you would get these unevenly on your beads if you left them on a tile that didn't have a towel or something. So it's fine on the back of this bead, but if you had it on the front of the bead or the side of the bead, it would look kind of odd. So that's all you do to, to release it. And now it's got that permanent dome shape in it so you don't have the extra weight. So I'm back and this is what I have left over of clay besides a couple globs from cane ends and things. But this is all the colors I have left and I have to figure out something to work with these. So I've made teardrops, sorry about my iPad, because um, I'm going to do Skinner blends with these and fold them and make some kind of cane or some kind of something. I don't really know. But since I don't have any other colors and I'm not used to not knowing what to do here, um, you know, I like this hue better here. And you can't mix purple and yellow without getting mud, so the purple has to go next to the blue. And see, sometimes colors will tell you what they can do. Let me make sure I get this in camera. And the red has to go next to the yellow, because that'll make orange, and uh, the purple's all I've got left. It cannot go next to the yellow. So I'm gonna make some Skinner blends out of this, and at the end you'll see what I've made from it, but I wanna show you what I do when I get down to nothing, because I'm just probably as confused as you are at this point, but I am challenged. I'm going to make something out of this. So I'm back, and I don't want to tell you how long it took me to roll these out and make these into Skinner blends without a pasta machine, but then I squinched them together and made these long pieces. So let me stretch these out so you can see what I did. So I squinched them together, and I made these ends thinner. Now. Since I don't have, I just have that and then one little piece here left over that isn't big enough, I'm not going to use that. I am going to make these sort of like a tsunami cane, which basically I'm going to wrap them around each other. And the only way I can see that yellow working is in the middle there because. If I put it with the purple, it's too much contrast, but it's still really pretty. I personally would have liked to have added some white or some black in here, but this is what I got to work with, and we'll see how it comes out. But it looks kind of pretty. So I just thought I'd share with you how I did that, so after the fact I don't get messaged on the comments, how, how did you do that? Why didn't you show us? It was just back to back, and now that you see me start to reduce it, you can see how it changes form and how you won't even recognize what I did there. So I reduced that cane and pinched it into a leaf, put it together, and made this pinwheel type of design. I made a few beads out of it. I'm not feeling it. I just want you to see you're not the only one that gets a mess. So the alternative to do with it is I'm going to chop it up and make some beautiful lentil beads. I might even make some leaves out of them because this color combination is actually gorgeous and this is just part of clay. Not everything works out and I want you to see that it doesn't work out for all of us. It's not just you and leaving these mistakes in to me is more valuable than just showing you a straight through video with no mistakes. Well, here's the results of days and days and hours and hours of playing with clay. So yes, it, the clay w was relatively inexpensive, but the time was excessive. I spent a lot of time. This is the bead that I made using the soda can lid. 
and we'll do some more beads like this. I want, just wanted to show you since I was showing how to use a cutter. And you can make a cabochon out of this or I could drill it and put fringe at the bottom. Lots of cool stuff. Here is my donut bead, one of them that I've made. I did not make a lot of focals only because I did not have a lot of clay to make focals with. So since you're only working with an ounce a piece, this is all there is. This is the leftover piece of clay that I have. It's the only piece of clay I didn't use. It's basically equal to a folded focal, so it was just too ugly to use. <laughs> I, I was just done pushing the limit on this one. But you can see, I mean, this is really deep of beads, how much I got out of this. This one I made with my bead roller hack using my hand sanitizer bottle and a piece of cardboard out of the recycle bin. So there's another video on that if you want to learn how to do these. But all of these beads I made are from my videos that are currently up. And that's basically why I made the ones I did. These you can see that I do not have my Skinner blend as refined as I normally would when I have a pasta machine, but they're still really pretty. And it was just that I needed to keep folding and rolling and folding and rolling. And I wasn't used to using a rolling pin anymore because I'm spoiled with my pasta machine. But I not only got this tray of beads, I also got this tray of beads. And these are some of my Natasha's that I was able to create with the ends of the canes that I created. Now, I did not have a lot of colors, so this is what I worked with. And you will find once you start to play that you, you just work with what you have. And here's some Skinner blend that I made into a swirl, some leaves that I used left over from these canes and my leaf canes so I just kind of swirled whatever I had left over but that's not all I got I got one more tray I also got this tray of beads so you can see from that pound and a half of clay let me move this all over and pull the camera back I want to show you how much you really get out of that box this was my challenge my personal challenge and I took it as a real challenge and you can see all of those beads came from this pound and a half of clay. So we started out with this, and that's what it ended up as. And if you would like, I'll put the last glob of clay in there. But that's how much you get. So it, you get hours and hours of fun play, but you also get lots of product out of this. So if you want to give it a try, the entire investment you need to invest is just about $20. And if you don't get a coupon on the clay, I don't know how much it would be overseas because this is an American product, but um, you can ser clearly see it's worth giving it a shot. And if you don't like doing it, you can donate the clay to somebody else because somebody's going to have fun with it. So I hope you give it a try and I hope you enjoyed seeing what you can make with a starter pack and not to be intimidated. It's just clay. And if it turns out to be a glob like this, we use it as clay filler. Don't worry about it. But please feel free to play with it because there's no better therapy than clay to me. So I hope you enjoyed.